So, uh, welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today, doing something a little bit different, we've had some people asking about, oh, I'm new to the hobby, what, you know, what should I do? So, as you can see, we've got Twilight Struggle from GMT Games. Not a war game. Not a war game. And this is, this is a video of, so you've played Twilight, Twilight Struggle, what should I do next? That is a question we get all the time. You know, where should I start? This game was so great, but what what do I do next? You know, where where to go? Because if you look on GMT's website, who make this? There's a, a million games. If you go into BGG and say, hey, what should I do next? There's a lot of different um, recommendations that you'll get, um, and it can be very over overwhelming. Yes, I, I remember when we started breaking into it. Both you and I, we did that. Oh, we got to search for the next game that gives us the feeling, but is, you know, different. And yes. I, I remember searching for hours through GMT's websites, BGG, all over the internet, trying to get a feel for what, what should I do next? Really like Twilight Struggle, what should I do next? And from our experience, <laughs> there were a couple of missteps. Uh, we played some games right after this that were... Very, very complex, comparatively oh, yeah. speaking. Like? Uh, like, we'll talk about some of these later. Yeah. Empire of the Sun. Empire of the Sun. We did that literally almost right after this. And I remember thinking, <laughs> what have I done? And not long after that, we played Fire in the Lake, which is also a like, brain yeah. burner as well. But And once again, I remember thinking, <laughs> what did we do? I got into this because it was fun, and now I'm struggling. So, we've had a, a decent amount of experience, so I wanted to come back and say, for, for new guys, you've just played this, this is a great game, you played it with another person, it was that awesome experience, we all love Twilight Struggle yeah. for the reasons that it's a classic. Well, it's a great game. Um, it is a great game. But what's, you know, what's next? So, what, what we're going to do is we're going to start with games which are, at least in our opinion, at a similar type of level of complexity, right. difficulty to learn, accessibility. And, and in some ways, the same mechanics or style. Yeah. That political back and forth struggle. Some are card driven, some are card assisted. Uh, but yeah, we'll we're gonna do this free form. Yeah. We've done a little talking, um, but we'll we'll see how it goes. So, the first one that I want to show you is 1960: The Making of the President. And there's a couple of versions of this. Honestly, I don't know if it matters which one you get. Right. This is the well. New, this is the deluxe. This version. This is the new GMT version, but there's old Z-Man Games versions that are very, very um, affordable. That you can just buy those on a secondary market. And as you can imagine, this is a very similar type of game. It's a. It's you literally play out the election in the 1960s. And if you look on here, you've got this map of the U.S. and it's all divided up into states, mm -hmm. and you are simply trying to win the most electoral votes and you do that by um, using cards it's a very similar card driven based mm. system where you're trying to spend points to either add your um, influence so to speak in areas or use the events on the cards to you know break the rules and to try and do different things I would actually say this is slightly less complex than Twilight I, Struggle I would agree I feel like this is much simpler yeah you don't have <clears throat> It's much harder to hurt yourself in this game, right? Um, but it's a bit more, it's a bit more straightforward. But it, in doing so, it's nice and easy to learn, and it gives you a really cool, slightly different historical theme. And this is this game, you know, is represented by a single card in Twilight Struggle. Yes, and I absolutely, think that's cool. Yeah. Blowing this up and playing out this on a different, yeah. Um, and I think this is quicker as well. It is. This plays yeah. in two or three hours this is at the most. three hours, give or take. Yeah, this is much closer to two. You yeah. can play it sub two if you've played it a couple times. But, but I think this game also still offers some of that real great interplay, fighting over a territory, mm -hmm. you know, over a specific state, because that state's important. Yeah, and, and it's very realistic in the... There are swing states, and mm -hmm. it's obvious which ones they are, and you yeah. will fight over those. And you, it, it, there's some really neat little sub games within this, yeah. like that you have to like you take a break and do these TV debates, which which are very cool. The last couple rounds and how those work out. This is a really fun game. Um, I like the theme. I think politics Agreed. are very interesting, and it's really cool looking aesthetically. This is a really nice. Game. And, and I remember when we when we played this one. I think it was last summer. So yeah. it was the summer of 2017. 
when we played it, we played it a couple of times, and I, I remember thinking, man, this is a game that I could play with my wife. Yeah. I remember at that time. Now, since then, we've done the Friday Night Fights videos. We, we're kind of mired right now. We don't know <laughs> what to do next. But this was one I thought, you know, I think she will, one, understand, and two, enjoy. So to me, this is a simple game, mechanically. I think your strategy is a little more straightforward than some other of the games we're going to talk about. And, and I think it's fun because it's fast. And I was surprised this has good, dec- this has good replay value. Absolutely. I was worried it'd be like, that's the same thing every time. You, there's a lot of um, replayability and variability in the things that you can try and do to, to affect the outcome of the election. Yeah. So that's 1960, the making of the president. Okay. So we're still in that similar style, similar feel, similar level. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start with with this game. Really like this game. Uh, Washington's War. This is by Mike, Mark Herman. Did I just say Mike? Mark Herman from GMT Games. This is a classic card-driven game. You One side plays the Patriots. One side plays the British. You're playing over a certain amount of time. Uh, over over the, the length of the war, and you are fighting over the political control of different states. So in that respect, it's very similar to Twilight Struggle. This does not necessarily have a lot of the sub-games, like the Space Race. Mm-hmm. There's nothing really... Although I will say the, the control of the colonies is an interesting concept. Um, very straightforward, very, CDG, historical... Very fun to play. Yeah. I enjoy Washington's War quite a bit. Yeah, this one gives you that same feel where it's a lot of the game is I'm spending resources to flip red to blue or blue right. to red depending which side you're playing. But this also has some <laughs> um, combat in it as well. It, it it's more of a war game. Yeah, yeah. Although I actually think it's more of a political struggle game. No, you're right. Level. But this one has. You know, you've got little standees of Washington, right. and you've got little men, and they have combat values, and you're marching your stacks around, um, kind of to support your political machinations, and to, to help you take control of places that would be otherwise off limit to yourself as well. So, this is more of a war game, but yes. you get that same um, card-driven aspect where you... it. If you ignore the political side of it with, with all the territory control, you will lose the game. Yeah. And, and what I mean by war game, it does have combat that, that can then decide some of that political con- control. Yeah. Because if you end in certain areas with your generals, you can then control those. So you, you really want to move and position yourself strategically at the end of turns to make sure you take certain, certain territories. One thing I did want to look at, the complexity level on this game, it says is a three... Twilight Struggle, I think, is a four. Yeah. So you and can I w- see. I would agree with that. I, I would agree. This is much more simple. Once again, mainly because you're not focused so much on the different sub games. Yeah. You don't have scoring cards. You don't have the space race. You don't have. So, so the, it's just different. But still a great game. And the cards themselves are very basic, straightforward. It's, yeah. Is I've got one, two, or three ops, or. I do the event. Yep. You don't have to choose between them. You're not trying to you right. avoid screwing yourself. Yeah. You, you, you don't have that aspect, but you have a military campaign to fight as well. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things I loved so much about Twilight Struggle was that concept of, I have a hand of red cards, and I'm, I'm blue, right? I'm the U.S. So every time I play one of those red cards to help myself, I'm aiding the Soviets. Yeah. I loved that about Twilight Struggle. Every CDG that doesn't do that, I feel a little bad. I always feel like it always should be that way. And see, I'm glad this one isn't right. because it made it so much easier. Oh, much simpler. This is a game to me of trying to, to mitigate damage. Yes. Washington's War is a game of trying to maximize what, what you, you can do. do. And I, that's and a great a way to put it. A different feel, and I like that. So we agree that that's, a, that's kind of an intro, same level. Yes, yes very much so. so. Um, next game I wanted to talk about is 13 Days. And you may have heard of this one in your research. People say, this is Twilight Struggle Light. And they are correct. So this is, <laughs> this is from Ultra Pro. And it's a great game in and of oh, itself yeah. as well. Like This plays in 35, 30 to 45 40 minutes. minutes. Yeah. It's really quick. It is a lot of the same feel as Twilight Struggle, although it is different, and um, 
it's just the Cuban Missile Crisis. So the board is like this big, and there's like nine spaces on it, or something like that. It's very, it's very small and compact, but as such, it's very, very tense. Mm -hmm. Because literally one cube can tip you on a knife yeah. edge, and you yeah. can... You can it spiral out of control very quickly. And one misstep in this can hurt you for that round significantly. It and won't lose the game for you, but it can hurt you. And what's nice, though, is that if it does and you do lose the game, it was 30 minutes, you, played, you just yeah, play it again. Right, right. Um, it's not like a four-hour investment where one mistake you made in the early wars just uh, yeah. you know, screwed you over and you're like... Ugh. Yeah. So I, I played this game with my wife, and she enjoyed it quite a bit. We had played Fort Sumter, which is based on this, and I'll talk about that. That's one of my games on the easier list. Great game, though. If, if non-gamers, like my wife, can pick that up, understand it, be competitive, and enjoy it, I think that tells you a lot about it as far as how it's laid out, the rules, the structure. Is it intuitive? Does it work? It, it works well. Yeah, so if this is too long for you, get this. Check that out. You'll get a lot of the same feel from it. Um, I love this game, and this is, if I don't have time for this, I will always crank this yeah. one out. I think this is um, a great, and this is so cheap. This yeah. is like a $25, $25 game. game at most. So, And, and that's a game, I, I think I need to get that for my collection, because it's just a great game. Yes. And you can play it with non-gamers, and I think that's that's really a testament to its design. Yes. Well, that's 13 days from Ultra Pro. All right, so I'm going to follow that up with a game that is actually based on 13 Days. The designer of this game, this is Fort Sumter, The Secession Crisis from GMT Games. Mark Herman used 13 Days as a, as a base for this design, used a lot. Which 13 Days is based off of his designs of CDJ. <laughs> Absolutely, it's, it's a circle. Um, but he used some of those concepts, put those in Fort Sumter. As you know, Fort Sumter uh, is, you know, the start of the American Civil War, um, 1860 and 1861. So this game is not a war game. This is a political struggle. You're literally playing cards that allow you to place political influence tokens onto different spaces. And then you're trying to control those spaces to get a special benefit and then score victory points. Fantastic game. Very fast playing. This actually can play in 20... To 25 minutes yeah, that's once you know the like. rules. <clears throat> I believe after having played 13 Days and Fort Sumter very close to each other, this is a simpler game than 13 Days even. I like this game a lot. 13 Days has a little more tension, I feel like. But I will say this, this game is, you know, you say on a knife's edge a lot. You're going to win this game by one point. That's just yes. the way it is. This is a very well-balanced yeah. game. Yeah. One to two points. I don't know that I've ever... I, I've beaten my wife early on in by five game. or six points. Yeah. Yeah. Not... Yeah. <laughs> in this game, by five or six points. But, you know, now we'll play and, and our victory margins are one or two points. That's a that's a great sign of a tight design that is put together well and, and plays well. This game's complexity level, let's turn it over, is a four. I would say this is a three. Um, yeah, this is not opinion. the same complexity as no. Twilight Struggle, not even close. But a great game. This gives you the theme and the history of the Civil War. And, and the interesting thing about this one is the theme is actually hidden in the cards themselves. Yes. If you play this game, it literally can be about throwing a card down and moving some cubes. But the theme is actually in the history behind the cards and the title and i like that too because it helped me to learn mm -hmm. i know a little about the civil war but but this helped me to uh to learn more about that we've played this several times i think this is a, a very very solid game and any any time you have a game in this style or genre that can play in 25 30 minutes that's yeah. always a winner and always something i like to have in a collection just to for sometimes, something different. Yeah, sometimes you don't want to play a four yeah. hour game, or sometimes you play a game and you're like, I want to play something else, I'll yeah. get something quick out. Well, now you've got something that's like, got that same little it's meaty. challenge and yeah. meat, but it's yeah. very quick as well. But it's funny, you, you come over to our house a lot, I come to your house, and we may have 45 minutes. This is a game, 13 Days is a game. Those yeah. are games that we will pull out and play 
Whereas we can't pull Twilight you, yeah, Struggle. Yeah, you can't commit to three hours yeah. of Twilight Struggle. So. And, and, and so that's a difference in these games, but I, I love Fort Sumter. It's a great game. Um, really like it. So there you go. Fort Sumter from GMT Games. The last of my, and I'm going to do easy games, is Cuba Libre. And this is, if you look on the side of the box, it says coin here. This is a coin game. It stands for counterinsurgency. Um, this one is obviously about the Cuban Revolution. In the 1950s. Now, so again, thematically, this is represented by a single card in Twilight Struggle. Yep, yep. Now, the coin series is, is significantly different from Twilight Struggle. Um, but this is, again, on the arbitrary complexity scale, it is a five. I don't think it's a five. Um, comparatively, this might be a tiny step up from Twilight Struggle. Yeah, I mean, because the systems are different. Yes. The system and the way you go about prosecuting the game is different. Now, this one is a game where you can play with four players, and these games are better with more players. Yeah. I'll, and each, each faction is entirely asymmetrical. Yep. You have your own played card that has a list of actions and special kind of actions that you can do, and you're trying to prosecute those um, in order to, you know, achieve your victory points. Which your victory conditions are different as well. Yes, they're, and, and they're that's entirely one of, different. I remember, you know, after playing Twilight Struggle, when we played these coin games, thinking, wow, that's, that's awesome that we win differently. Yes. So you have to know, you really have to know what the other player can and cannot do in its capabilities, and you have to know how he's going to win the game. And what's nice is on your played card that says everything you can do, or it also says what everyone else can yeah, do, so yeah. when, when you're not doing your turn, you're like inspecting what everyone else is doing. Because you've got to know what they can do. And try, trying to you figure to. out what you know you see on the board. Oh, he's moved a piece over here. He's trying to do this thing. Yep, yep. So a lot of that same tension. The cards in this game, it's a deck of cards. You don't have a hand of cards or anything like that. The cards are like an event card. So it, you flip the next card, it tells you the turn order for that turn. Yep. And then it's possible for one of the players to activate the event on that card. But doing so then opens up a lot of other possibilities for the other players in yeah. the game. Because this has a very unique turn-taking system, which is excellent. Um, you know, if you choose to do all of this cool stuff, it basically opens up a kind of a flow chart that everyone else can now do a bunch of awesome stuff. Yeah. So you're like, oh, I want to do all this cool stuff and take all this power, but everyone else gets the opportunity to do that mech. Or mm. you kind of play really stingy. I want to do this tiny thing. So that you can't like, do anything. And the next player's like, ah, oh, I can only do this other tiny thing. Yeah, and, and that's something, you know, we've played these games hundreds of times, and I always love playing with you because I know you're a miser. <laughs> And, and you're literally going to take the limited op eight out of ten times because you don't want me to be able to take an, an op and a special activity. And, and that's what I love about this game because my play style has actually changed because you do that to me, I do it to you. Yes. And it works. It's a very nice mechanic that allows a, a lot of thinking and, and strategic thinking about what you want to do to limit your opponent most other games you don't really play that way no not in that way at least and this so is I love that. a game where it, I, I recommend this one is like the first of your coin games because the map is very small well it's small and it's it's narrow and there's just the the, the choices are more limited yeah, you're I, not, I will say you're that. not getting lost yeah. in this huge map yeah. of like what you're, you're not on the Vietnam map that has 40 spaces yeah. and this, I think, allows players to really get a good feel for the system. Yes. And, and it's, like, it's like training wheels. You know, it keeps you, here's how, what you need to do to, to play a coin game. And it's shorter. Yeah, it, it, this plays in about game. two and a half hours. Yeah. Aren't there three, de or three, uh, usually there's three propaganda you, cards. You can play with three or four. Three or four. So it's, you know, two, two and a half. We played this game with Matt, yeah. our, our Euro game friend. Who has actually now beat us in Triumph and Tragedy? I think he was going to win. He probably was going to win this because we we had to stop. We need to finish that. But if if a Euro gamer can come in and play a game like this and do well, I think that's amazing. 
Yeah. Because we think strategically, maybe we're idiots. Maybe you and I are just bad. I think so. But playing with those guys, it's so fun. I remember Tim won Liberty or Death with the French. And I, he has no idea what he's doing. Tim, we love you, but we know you didn't know what you were doing. But that, that's one of the great things about this game. I think Euro gamers can pick this up. Huge gateway into a broader spectrum of games and also an entry level to the coin series itself. And this is the first game so far we've talked about that can be played solo. Yes. This has full solitaire AI for all the other factions. If yep. you, and it's a, that's a, it can be a little bit of management of three other factions if you want to do it on your own, but doing the best possible move, you could do that very easily that's on this one. That's called God Mode, right? Yeah. Um, so this one is one that you can push around on your own, yeah. no problem. The other ones, a lot of hidden you, information you, on the you cards. You can't play Twilight Struggle solo. No, you, you can't. Not, not the same way. Yeah. Um, I really like this. Love the coin series. Um, what's nice about this is you do get a similar feel from Twilight Struggle where, yeah, you've got cubes on the board that are your pieces, but you're also trying to influence those spaces on the board yes. with your um, kind of support or opposition markers yeah. as well. So, so this is, is kind of area control and area influence. Yeah, you've got that multi-layer in there, which yeah. makes this a really, really good game. Yeah, great game. Cuba Libre. Love it. Uh, so my final easy game, and this is one we're going to argue yeah. about, uh, is Triumph and Tragedy, European Balance of Power from GMT Games. Now, let me explain myself. This is a full complexity. Yeah, this is a full complexity. I feel like this is simple mechanically, right? You are, you are making decisions about, do I get investment cards or um, political cards? And then you have a hand of cards that you're then going to play. I just don't feel like there's a lot of complexity in the mechanics of it. Now, I will say, and I will admit that in order to win this and do well, you need to understand it. Yeah. And you need to be able to think strategically, and Matt kicked our butt at this game. Because we ignored him, and you and I worried about Western Europe, and that was a mistake. But we learned our lesson, and we're going to get him again. <laughs> but I feel like this game mechanically is very simple. Triumph and Tragedy. Now, there's some complexity in the, for instance, the communication and trade routes, supply, um, movement of, of pieces across borders. The combat is a little uh, fiddly sometimes, but it's great. It's a block war game. And that's just it. This is this is like a grand strategy war game. Yeah. If you've played Axis and Allies, this is like a step up from that. Where, you know, you control an entire nation. I've got to research technology. I've got to build an economy. Got to grow my population. Got yep. to gather resources to fight the war. Then I have to build my units, I have to develop those so they're stronger and bigger and better, and I've got to fight a war. And that, to me, there's just a lot of stuff in yeah. there. That I yeah. think this is just, should just be like the medium, like this is the next this, step uh, This should up. be into a medium I category. Because so. the card play is similar to Twilight Struggle in that you got some choices to make. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a couple different decks of cards. And each of those cards has a couple different options. So it's it's how do I utilize my cards, and yeah. w which things do I gamble on? Oh, I'm gonna just use these to do this other thing. When maybe I should do this thing. Yeah. But I hope this pays off in the long run. So that's the really cool part. That's t to me is uh, very Twilight Struggle esque. Um, yeah. But outside of that, this is a this is a pretty strong war game. Although yeah. Of it people is. like it's, it's an economic game, which it well, is. Well, and and Matt won. He defeated us economically. Yeah, he just built a Russian yeah. juggernaut, and we. He he literally got the right cards. He was able to invest in the technologies, and I just I didn't pay attention. I really didn't. I didn't pay attention to Poland or Czechoslovakia or any number of the other Austria. <laughs> I I should have done more. I was more worried about fighting the Brits. And the the Western Allies in in France. And this but, is a long game. This is a big one. This yeah, is this a three, -hour three game. to four hour game. Um, but I, I will say this: I love this game. Yeah, this was great fun. This is one of the games that I would say I need to get back to the table immediately. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's a three player game, so it can be a little difficult. Uh, although I think you can. You know, you can do a two-player game and then somebody... I, I don't know. I'm sure you could figure it out. Maybe, yeah. This, to me, is... It really is a three-player three game. to get the most out of it, though. 
But so this is the final of my easier games or similar, and now we're I'm now trying to concede to you that yeah maybe you're right maybe this is a more just because there's much more to manage yeah. that's that's yeah. really all. Well, there's so many different aspects of it, like yeah. you said, and that's. And the game actually changes throughout. Yes. The first part, you're really focused on those cards and building up your technologies. Then you're focused on building your units and then controlling areas. And then it gets to war. So, yeah, I, uh, I would agree with you. I'm going to give you this one. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to start with medium first, if that's okay. You started with Edie. Easy. Yeah, fine by me. So I'm going to grab uh, my first... Triumph and Tragedy? Say that again? Oh, yeah. So let's start with Triumph and Tragedy that we just... All right, Wilderness War, the French and Indian War. This is a card-driven game designed by Volko Runke. This was actually the fourth GMT game that I played. It was, our, it was my fourth. Fire in the Lake, Churchill. We played this after Fire in the Lake? Yes. No, we didn't. I thought we played this before. This was my third. Anyway, this is a card-driven game focused on the French and Indian War. It is an asymmetric game that is very, I think, very, very challenging strategically. I think to understand what you are trying to do, you have to think about it a lot. And to get your units to do what you need them to do. Because it, the movement on the map is very limited. <laughs> yes. You have highways that are rivers, and then you can go across, uh, across the wilderness, but it's going to take you forever. And this is a good simulation of the French-Indian War in that sense, because it's so diff... You can't just hop on a truck and drive yeah. across Canada. No. It's really, really challenging, and it takes a lot of time and therefore risk to start marching armies across the yep. board. You know, if you've got a fort out here that gets isolated, you're like, oh no. You have, it's, you're like, okay, I've got to send a relief column. Yeah. And then you've got to get them there. Well, and then, and then the you're being relief, harassed by Indians. Yeah, the, the oh, relief oh. column, by the time they get there, they're not really a relief column anymore. Because no. they've been targeted. If you and, could even hold out for the siege. Yeah. Uh, it's, so it's, it's a, I think this is a much more complex game, in my opinion, than Twilight Struggle. It is an area movement game. Yes. It is a card driven game. The cards are very simple, I think. They're very straightforward. Yeah, the, the cards themselves, and you don't have that punishing aspect either. No. You, you just, don't you don't play this card and it, it goes off for your for yeah. your opponent. Um very asymmetric. The French are trying to win by raiding. Yeah, raiding and by holding out and just skirmishes. Yeah. The British, they gotta get in there and they gotta take out a couple of big forts. They gotta try to get you know, siege of Lewisburg. They've got to do those things in order to win, or it's going to be very difficult. And you're taking these like pretty slow, pondering bodies. When yeah. you could get into pitched battles, you're going to crush them. But getting there and being able to fight on your terms can be difficult as yeah. well. And this one's, I think this one's quite a long one as well. Oh, this we we actually played our first time. We played. I think it was a seven or eight hour game. But that was also. But we didn't know what we were doing. Like three years ago. And this was like our first ever like war game, war game. Yeah. I well, think. and and you also had your, you know, Atticus was much younger. Yeah. We could only do it on kids. Wednesday nights. I mean, it was. Uh, th there's some complexity in this game that you have to think about. There's some planning in this game that you have to think about. If you don't plan, your armies are going to sit forever. Yeah. And and they're just going to do nothing. So you got to think about what you're trying to do, how you're going to score victory points, get that done. And move forward. But it's a very fun game. It is punishingly fun. After our very first game, after seven or eight hours, what was the score? The, the score was zero, zero, zero to zero. And we had scored victory points. I think at one time, either of us had a three or four point lead. Yeah, because the victory points are on a swinging scale, just yeah. like they are in Twilight Struggle. And we ended up with a tie in the end. A zero, zero tie. Which was... Like kissing your sister, you know? Um, I, I, I don't know. Just, I think a great game. The complexity rating says a four. I think it's probably a four in the mechanics. This is probably a four if you play war games. Yes. If you've only played Twilight Struggle, this, may be a five this might or be a six. five or a six. Yeah. Just because it's a, it's a, you got to think about differently. you got to manage right. your stacks with your armies in it. Right. Then you got to learn combat systems. A little bit more there. Yeah. But, but the card system is... Simpler than this one. Agreed. Um, you still have. You're still yeah. limited by what you can do, but <laughs> you're really focused on the op point or the event. Yeah. And if it's yeah. if it's an opposing event, 
you just play the op point and the event doesn't go off. All you've yeah. done is deny them the option of having it. Yeah. But yeah, great game. The other thing I remember, I remember when we when we played this the first time, looking at the French and my attack values and comparing those to the British and your attack values, I remember saying to myself, Grant, you'll never win. <laughs> So because of that, I did raiding. I raided the crap out of your frontier. I think every round I had two or three raids that went off, but they were very hard to get done. Yeah. But I love that. This was one of the first eight real asymmetric games that we played. Yeah. Well, obviously Twilight Struggle, but the way you score victory points, totally different for each and side. Yeah, the way you play the game, right? Yeah, different totally aspect. different. So yeah, great game. This is in my medium category. You're gonna you're gonna sweat a little bit if you've only played Twilight Struggle, but don't let that deter you. Great no. game. Great game. So, medium games for me. We've got Churchill Big Three Struggle for Peace. Um, this is a bit of a step up from Twilight Struggle, only in that you have to kind of change the way you think about this. This is a too complexity. Yeah, and I, I don't know that I agree with that. See, I think I do. You think you do? Having played it now... I multiple, can just pick this up times. and just play it. Yeah. Because I know what I'm doing. Right. But the the rules for this game challenge the way that I thought about games. True. This plays very differently. Especially the scoring system at the end of the game. Yeah. So if you kind of look at his, this is the board, and it's divided into two major sections. Here you have this kind of three-track table, because you play one of either Churchill, Stalin, or Roosevelt, and you're basically sat around a conference table debating how you're going to yeah. fight the war. How the war should be How fought. you're going to carve up the world afterwards. Yeah. What the political outlook should look like. And, and the way you're debating is not by words, right? We're not sitting here going, well, I, I should be helped. I'm Comrade Stalin. Help me. Although That's you do do that. Well, you do that sometimes, right? It's, Especially when you have a three-player game. Mm -hmm. We've never really had a three-player game of this. You've We've always played two-player with, two a player with a bot. But the way you negotiate and discuss is those action cards. And I'm telling you, it's fantastic. Yeah, so in this one, each player has their own deck. Yep. So you're never going to get someone else's cards. And the cards have a value on them. And that's how many spaces you might move up on your track. Um, and there might be some special abilities that help you to move more or to do some other stuff. And basically what you do is you, you debate a whole bunch of issues, mm -hmm. which are small tokens. And there's a whole... You choosing which issues to debate aspect as well. And then once you finish all your debating, anything that's on your track, you take those tokens and you get to resolve them. Stalin's got a bunch of stuff on his track, he gets to resolve those. And Roosevelt might have a bunch of stuff on his track, yep. he gets to resolve those. And what those look like is on this huge kind of grand strategy board, which is an abstraction of both the European theater yeah, of war the and the Pacific theater of war, you have these little tokens and they mean things. You know, one might be like, put out some naval counters, or might be you get some extra resources to buy political influence, um, or clandestine actions, things like that. And you literally will progress the war mm -hmm. in a very abstract way. Um, and what's nice is is that this is, once you figure this out, the, the, the war aspect, um, almost it doesn't take care of itself, but you can influence it in a way where it can. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's where the complexity here is at two. Yeah, because the, yeah, you're right. Once you learn how the game works, playing the game is very easy. Right. Um, very difficult to master. Well, this once game. again, mechanically easy. I, I always want to qualify those statements. Mechanically yeah. easy because I still think there's a lot of strategy in this. This is, and if you don't play so this well, you're going to get destroyed. Yeah. You're just going to get. You're going to get destroyed. And. Like I said, the, the way this game plays is very different to how a lot of, frankly, other war games are played. Absolutely. I love that it's a three-player game because there's so few of those in this kind of a war game type genre. Yeah. And doing that, you get a totally different feel. The debates back and forth are great. Even picking the issues where, like, oh, someone's there and they pick the <laughs> nuclear research issue and you're like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even doing that has so much tension to it. Yeah. And that's something that I love. I think this is a very tense game. The the negotiation aspect where you're on the same side, all allied against the Axis, but you all have your own agendas mm. of what you're really trying to do. And and like you said, this has some really interesting victory conditions. Yeah. Because if you run away with it, you're, you, you, you lose. lose the game. 
but because you dominate the table and then everybody gangs up on you. Yeah. So it's like you you can't win that way. You've got to be because you're allies. You have to maintain contact. So you have to stay. And I've done that before, where I felt like I was running away with it, and I'm like, yeah, I got to pull back. Yeah. You know, and and I have that's to, I have to that's pretend awesome. like I'm helping everyone. Yeah. Else. And it's. The other thing I like about this game that is very similar to Twilight Struggle is there is a mini game within the game. Not only the conference table, which is a mini game in and of itself, the Eastern Front and the the Pacific Theater, that, that's a mini game as well, but that nuclear... The little nuclear, the Avon uh, research. Oh my gosh, that that's a mini game and it's so cool because Stalin has an ability to... I can win that almost every time when Stalin's active. Oh, and if and if people are doing that kind of stuff, it's yeah, you know, they're playing it wrong. <laughs> but it's so interesting. I just think that's so in- because it's ahistorical a little bit, and I like it. I like that you can kind of make it up. I I, I think it's great. Yeah. This game is fantastic. This is a game you're probably gonna win the war, but you have to win the peace. And doing that yep. can be very very difficult. Yeah, great game, great game. Sure nice, Phil. nice, this nice work, Mark. You always do great. Uh, my, my next medium uh, complexity game is another coin game. Um, Liberty or Death, The American Insurrection. My second favorite coin game. Uh, Fire in the Lake is my favorite. I don't know that that's ever going to change. But I like the topic, and I think Harold Buchanan did a great job in this game. We've played this one four-player a couple of times yeah. with non-war gamers. I love this game because there's a lot of negotiation in it. There's a lot of discussion about how to do things. And there's a lot of teamwork required. The the British need those Native Americans to guide them and direct them. The Patriots need the French's money. And the the blockades. And the heavy troops because they don't have it. So this game, I really feel like the four factions, (coughs) excuse me, have got to work together well. It feels like Twilight Struggle in the in the respect that you're using cards still. They're not card driven; it's card assisted. Um, but I I don't know. I just love Liberty or Death because I love that the factions really I think need each other. Yeah, and this is one of the the coin games where I feel like they actually need each other. And what I like about this one, it's what I like about most of the coin games is that yeah I can march my armies into somewhere, but the people hate that I did that. Mm-hmm. So I have to garner that that support in the city, as well as having my troops in there to yeah. really like control that. Because I can have my guys in there, but if if the city's in opposition and they're that pissed that my troops are yeah. you know billeted there, th- that's victory points for the other player. Like, yeah, it's no good me having my guys. There. Right, they don't do any good because you've lost control of the area. And that's that's to me is where you get that twilight struggle of Back tr- trying to take control of an area so that you and so that it's really yours and yeah. then you know you've got your troops in there so they're nice and safe it's hard to you know have enemies pop up there kind of thing yeah so that's that's what i really love about all the coin games is that you get these there's, there's really two layer of game there as well yeah i also really enjoy the propaganda aspect of this game you know the the patriots can influence certain areas and make up a bunch of lies about the British, which they weren't really. Or a bunch of truths. They were really truths. But it makes those areas then more difficult for the British to take over politically. And that's a big part of the game. And I I just love that. The combat mechanic is very neat. Um, It's very simple. It feels period authentic. It's attritional. You're not going to go in and with five cubes, destroy three cubes. You're going to potentially kill one or two and force a retreat, or but you're not necessarily going to wipe the army out. I, I like that aspect. Yeah. It, it makes it some feel a little cat and mouse and a little bit, well, I can lose this battle, but I can win the war by doing this. This is a complexity five. I would agree with that. Yeah. Because you have to play the factions so differently. I, I We've played this multiple times. We've played the uh, War in the South scenario from C3I. I love this game. This is one of the coin games that I think you have to have four players to really fully appreciate it. Uh, they see, all do. See, I, I disagree. You disagree with that? I think this makes an excellent two-player oh, game. I, yeah, I think it makes an excellent two-player game. Absolutely. Because the factions are well aligned. Yeah. In some of the other games, you know, right. I think you lose some of that. I think in this one, a two-player game is just as good as a four-player game. Yeah. Well, I, I will, I'll go back to one of our games that we played with our non-wargaming buddies, Matt and Tim. 
Matt was the Native Americans. I was the British. And I remember Matt asking me, and it wasn't just what am I going to do because he didn't understand the rules. He was trying to understand what I was going to do so he could play off of that. And I love that because it, Matt's a smart guy. But it, it helped me realize that these four factions really need each other, but they also... They still have their own They have their agendas. own agenda, and but they really need the other player to really get close to their agenda. And I think that's fantastic. I love this game. It's a little more complex than a Twilight Struggle. Has a little more war uh, to it. There's some direct combat. Um, definitely like it. Liberty or Death, the American Insurrection from GMT Games. So I think my last medium style game is Labyrinth, The War on Terror. Now, this is a yeah, complexity for Some people might put this in like the, you know, very similar level. There is a lot of similarity between Labyrinth and Twilight Struggle. The, the card play, for example, it is almost identical yeah. in the sense that of how the cards specifically work and how punishing that they can be. So this one, as you can tell, this is, it's the War on Terror 2001 until... The Global War on Terror, right? yeah. And if you have Everything. a look on the, on the back, you've got a picture of the map here. It's a lot of the, a lot of the Middle East, North Africa, and Asia. And basically this one, you're trying to vie for political control of these areas, but you also have um, units that, you know, the Americans are going to deploy boots on the ground... Um, and then the, the other faction of the jihadist faction. So this is one where thematically this might not be everyone's cup of tea. Um, so just know that going into it. Because the jihadist player has a bunch of cubes that they're putting out that are they're basically their, their terrorist cells. Yeah. And you're putting them out on the board. And the board has these spaces. And they're all linked together just like in Twilight Struggle. But in this one your pieces can move around on the board. Now this one is different... And I think, to me, it's more complex than Twilight Struggle and a Step Up because this game is only as good as your jihadist player. Because it's not a game where you just, you're playing and playing and playing. The jihadist player is trying to establish and take control of a certain number of resources um, or trying to execute terrorist plots with weapons of mass destruction. And if they can do that, they can win the game. But they have to actively go and do those things. And if they're not, you'll get rolled yeah. um, by the U.S. player, like straight up. So you have to have a good jihadist player, and that player has to set the tone for the game. You, ha I have, you, know, you have to actively go out and try and do those things. You also have to bluff that you're not doing those things, that you're doing other things. Yeah, you have to be unpredictable. So that you can stretch the, the kind of coalition forces thin, so that yeah. you have better odds to do the things you want to do. Or that you can go and faint and go and do this other thing over here, um, but there's a lot of um, there's a lot of creativity and thinking that you yeah. have to have in doing this game, um, and that's I why I think that. it's a step up from Twilight Struggle. Yeah. You get some of that in this, but the Labyrinth could be very flat and can end very quickly if yeah. you've got a bad. Well, and and, and the other thing about this game is you the cards are important for the events, but the op value is what you need to take actions in certain... Yeah. Uh, the, is that the government stability? I think they refer to that term. Yeah, they have to have... So if, if it has a one stability, you can only use a one card. And, and that can be very, very challenging. I think every time we play this game, the first five minutes, we kind of... I say to myself, maybe you don't, how do I do this? Yeah. You know, how do I get... When I've got these very stable countries and I, you know, I want to do something in them. I, I can't, or I got to roll six. It just becomes very difficult. So lots of planning, I think, and pre-thought, lots of management of that hand. I think it's very, almost more importantly than Twilight Struggle. Twilight Struggle, you're trying to manage the damage. This one, I think you're trying to manage to do what you need to do. I, I and think if you can't yeah, do that... It's much easier to hurt yourself in a hand. It, it, it is. You're also trying to minimize the damage, because I may have all of your events. Yeah. But it's like a dual thing. I'm managing the damage on myself, and also trying to do what I need to do. And it can be very challenging. Yeah. I think this one is, while mechanically it's it's very similar, 
This is a, a very different game. Yeah, the the sides in this one are truly asymmetrical yep. and have entirely different modes of operation. So there's a learning curve. And when we play, I typically play the jihadist play and yep. you play the US. Because, and we've done that, you know. Because we feel comfortable with it yeah. and we just want to play the game. And switching sides. It's hard. We did that once and we'll never do it. Yeah, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's just so hard. It's very, we must learn a whole separate game. Yeah. Just from the mechanic standpoint. And from, you know, the way you approach this, you know, how, how do I even try and do this whole other thing? Um, I really like this game. Yep. Uh, I think it's, I think it's, evo- is, I get more feeling out of this than I do Twilight Struggle. Yeah, yeah. Because it can feel so hopeless at times. Yeah. Or it can be so elating when you get away with doing something that's very difficult, or you yeah. get yourself out of this thing, or you pull a fast one on your opponent. Um, obviously, like I said, theme might, might not be for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's a, it hits a nerve, right? It, yeah, it's and th- there's an expansion to this as well, which, which is a Arab fantastic Springs. game. That's got great level of, of, of history in yeah. there, and some very very interesting aspects that it adds to the game, but. I really enjoy playing this game as a game. I think it's a really unique game as well. But it, you, if you play this, you'll see how grounded it is yeah. in, in the core yeah. of Twilight Struggle. But you also will see how different it is. Oh, yeah. And your head will hurt after playing it. I guarantee you that. Yes. Um, Maybe it's just my head. I but... think this has a similar play length to this one. Yeah, two to three hours. Um, well, and you can also... You can play a full three decks, yeah, or you can you, play two decks. And that, that is nice. Which, you can lengthen it or shorten it. We've done short games. Do. We've done the long games. This does have full solitaire AI box for yep. either side as well in this new edition. So that's also very, very good as well. Yeah. So that's Labyrinth War on Terra. All right. My first uh, hard, hard game. And, and when I say hard, I the, the, we're, we're going into the deep end of the pool, I think, with, with some of these. <laughs> yeah. You, you might not want to go straight to these. Yeah. Don't dive into the 12-foot... <laughs> Deep water. Here I stand, Wars of the Reformation. This is a game that came out many, many years ago, probably almost 10 years ago. But they did an updated edition last fall for the 500th anniversary anniversary of the Reformation. And in fact, I got my copy in the mail on the day of the, the Reformation. That's which was crazy. October 31st of 15... That was 95 Thesis. Yeah, that's what I meant. I said Reformation. The 95 Thesis by Luther. So we have... I'm going to be honest. We've only played this game two-player. We played the special two-player only game, which is a variant. This game is made for up to six players and would be an absolute joy to play. Yeah. If we could find four other people <laughs> to sit down for 12 hours... And play this, I would I would love to do that. This is a card-driven game. It is a card-driven game that is multifaceted, though. Yeah. It is it is focused on the religious as the religious aspect, the political aspect, and the war aspect of this Wars of the Reformation. So that's why I feel like it's so much more complex than Twilight Struggle. Yeah. You are really focused on three different things. You can fight with every faction. Some are better than others. Yeah, some you don't want. <laughs> yeah. Protestants shouldn't be running around doing a lot of fighting. I think pa- fighting should papal be... Papal states want to be able to fight for them. <laughs> yeah, you should do strategic fighting. But that political aspect, influencing places, getting control, and then there's the religious side of it. You know, the, 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 the uh, Protestants need to translate the Bible. They need to engage in debates. The papal... States need to engage in debates with them and burn these guys at the stake yeah. in order to get victory points. It is just such a deep thematic game. You just can't go in this and not understand, or you're gonna you're gonna struggle. Yeah, this one was a hard one to learn. There was a lot of rules, it, and the complexity is a six. And I would agree with that. It may be a seven. Uh, yeah. Um, the mechanics are a little hard to understand for the for the battling. I'll be honest with that because I've I've messed with them solo. Just to try to figure it out. And they're a little more clunky than... Now, I've read a lot since, and I think I understand it. So if we ever play it, I think I got it. But that was one element we struggled in in our two-player play. But it mostly was about the religious side. Um, But definitely a fantastic game. I love the theme. I love the concept. It's a struggle for control. I think it's a a great game. Yeah, I can't wait to get... we got to get people together on like a big board game day. I don't know who, who. I don't know that Tim would like... To play 12 hours. Matt would. He may be bored. Yeah. 
Maybe. Josh Wood. He may. I just don't. I don't know. One day we'll play. One this. day. One day we'll go to a convention and we'll sit down for a week and play. Yeah. One. One day. <laughs> But I, I love Here I Stand. I think it's a great game. But it is much... You're diving in the deep end of the pool. Yeah. Speaking so, of diving in the deep end of the pool, we have... Uh, Empire of the Sun. Yeah. Th- this is one where I mistakenly bought this. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking it was something different than it was. We played Twilight Struggle. Oh, and then we yeah. played Labyrinth. And we played Wilderness War. And then I bought this... Because they were like, oh, it's a card-driven game. It uses the same type of card system. And people were like, it is like the Pacific Theater War game. And I was like, oh, that's great. That sounds, sounds awesome. That sounds great. I'll buy it. <laughs> and a uh, little unassuming two-inch box. And it's got a list of all the various big, huge battles and campaigns here on the board. Such a huge so map. Great. It's just so vast. This is a deeply complex game. Yeah. Um, complexity it's, it's, it's a seven. Okay, I I would agree with that. It and might be an eight. Rules wise, it's probably like an eight or so. It's got a big fifty page rule book in yeah. it. Yeah. But thank you, Alexander, for reading and digesting that. It took a long time. Yeah. But the re- the real complexity is <clears throat> is the strategy mm-hmm. because the board is the entire Pacific Theater basically, Huge. and you have so many pieces. You know, even looking at a card, it's got a lot of information on it. Yeah, it does. You say, okay, I I can either use it for this number at the top, but then it's like, if I use that, I can do, I can activate, you know, this HQ, who can then activate X amount of units, units. or I can activate this slightly less good HQ, which can activate fewer units. units. And or I can do the event on it, which might activate a different HQ that yep. can do a whole bunch of extra special stuff that would yeah, break. Yeah, sometimes the rules. that would break the rules. Yeah. So there's a lot of complexity in that. Yeah. yeah. This is not a game where you have the opponent's cards in your hand. You have your own separate deck, and that's kind of uh, done through some that there's a, like some timing of which cards go and when and right. all that kind of stuff as right. well. But. There's just there's choices at every turn, and at times it can feel like there's too many choices, yeah. and that's where the complexity comes in. Because once I've decided I'm going to activate this HQ, yeah. well, he's going to activate all of these units, I'm going to bring this fleet together, they're going to sail down here, and they're going to launch what kind of an attack? Right. Are they going to do an air, air naval le- attack yep. and attack another navy? Are they going to do a bombardment here? And can I amphibiously assault with yep. some land units? Or, Lots of choices. Know, am I doing a land battle over here? Can I fly in my air forces from over here? So there's a lot of counting distances. Well, and and, and the, the really funny thing is the zone of control and the HQ activation. Because you, your HQ can't go through an enemy zone of control to yeah. activate units on the other side. You have to count around that. Yeah. And you know how difficult that is when you're trying to... Tr- I mean, it's... When you're trying to be subtle, yeah. and I'm going to try to invade over here, and you see me counting, you're like, oh, Grant's going to invade over here. So it's yeah. I, it's very complex. Online, that becomes much easier because you can click and it shows the zone of control. Yeah. But this has a very good Vassal module yeah, that I've played Vassal, around yep. with, and I would recommend playing that. Or if you can find someone to teach you yeah. the game through Vassal... It's much easier to visually pick it up, so that when you play the board game version, you're yeah. like, okay, boop, 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 here. Got- this is a complex game. Yes, uh, I agree. But it is thematically incredibly rich. Yeah. You will play the entirety of the Pacific Theater of War, unless you concede, which I would recommend. There's no point playing out to the end. Like, if you know that this is going to go one way or the other, and it becomes obvious, yeah, just, yeah. you just concede, just end the game. You don't have to play out another three years of the war. Just don't save yourself the trouble. That's just <laughs> just start it over again. That's just some gaming and, advice. experience. It. <laughs> um, because this can be a very very long one as well. Yeah. Because every card is a full op and has a ton of stuff that you're doing. Well, and you have to do a lot of calculations. Yeah. Attack values can be huge. You can have a sixty or seventy attack value. Yeah. Right, because you have eight units. So all those calculations, your losses are... I mean, it's just... Yeah. It is very complex. I do like, you know, in, in Twilight Struggle, the mini games. This has a couple of mini games yes. within it. The Chinese Revolution. 
the uh, Burma Road. Um, what other? So there's also um, you, the the political will at home. The war in Europe is it yeah, some track as well that goes up and down. And that just so many cool little yeah. mini games within the game that you got to focus on. It's just like in, in Twilight, you can't just ignore the space race. No, you, you can't ignore the space race because it gives you abilities. This is the same thing. You can't move troops through the jungle without doing the Burma Road. I mean, you just, it's very difficult. So I, I love this game as well. I remember the first time we played it. We played on a Saturday. We played like six or seven hours. And I swear we only got through two years. Yeah, I needed a nap after that. And we did everything wrong. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I did amphibious invasions with the wrong units. I brought down my units that are supposed to stay in Pearl... I brought him down to like the, the, the Guadalcanal area and, and I'm like, well, I left myself wide open. I could have been destroyed. Yeah. But you just don't understand those things. I know history, but it, it was trying to get my mind around all of that. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff in here. This is a cool intellectual exercise just oh, to play around with. Sometimes I just set it up just game. to like move things yeah. around. It's just, just to play with it. It's just fun. But yeah. it is a lot of reading to get it. And to get it right. And there's a fully integrated bot system, right? They call it Formio. Yes, it used to be the Erasmus system, right. which has since been updated to, to new Formio. Formio. So in a new edition that's coming out, that's all, that's tip I'd, top. I'd like to try that. It would yeah, melt my brain alone. Because the Erasmus in my house. system was not easy flung. to use. Yeah, it was a lot of big flow charts and it was yeah. some of the abbreviations were like, What is he talking about? But yeah. <laughs> This is one where I would just do best possible move anyway, yeah. basically. Uh, but this is a very, very complex game. The, the most complex game, I think, that we have played together, I would say. Yeah. Wouldn't you say that? I would agree with that. Un Unconditional Surrender is also complex. I don't think it is. You know, Well, there's it's, just a lot going it's on. It's got a lot of rules, but... But it's more simple. Is very this simple. is very complex. Yes. I agree. That's a seven, right? Yeah. 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 All right, so my... Uh, final game is Fire in the Lake, another coin game. This is volume four. This focuses on the Vietnam War. The complexity of this one is a five. I feel like it's more like a six. Probably, yeah. But it, once again, not card driven, card assisted. You have four asymmetric factions. I love the interplay between the factions in this one. Yeah. Even as we play two player game, I'm struggling with keeping the Arvin. And the U.S. not at odds with each other, and I'm controlling both of them. And in in this one, I feel like there's a lot more animosity between Absolutely. the two kind of allies in the in, on both yeah. sides. Well, because the NVA can come down and take over bases, yeah, and troops, and it's like you can't have my VC troops, all right? I'm <laughs> I'm using those. Yeah, like I need those. But guys. that's just the way it is. That, but very complex. I think this is very complex, not mechanically. Very complex strategically. Yes. Trying to understand how to do what you're supposed to do. Because mechanically, a lot of the co once you played a coin game, they're all pretty much the same. Uh, yeah. There's differences in the actions you can take and how they're executed, or the, the activation game. chart is different a but little bit. But you know what to expect from yeah. it. Yeah. I know the card tells me this. The cards do this. I will take an action and do this if I can. Or I'll you know, I know what I'm trying to do. But this one, the map is so big. Yeah. And... And so varied. Yes. I mean, there's jungle, there's city, there's mountains. I, it's just, and each of them has a different effect on combat. Yeah. Pendragon does that too, right? There's... And I remember thinking, ah, oh, they're back to that, where the, the terrain really matters. Yeah. Like and, and I like that. Myself. I like that, because that brings in a little bit more of the war game side of it. Yes. Um, but we struggle with that sometimes. I, you know, part of it is just very hard to do what you got to do. And period. This, this is a game. Why this coin game reminds me so much of Twilight Struggle is that <clears throat> I can, I need to do so much stuff. Yeah. But I can only do so little. Right. And right. like, you know, Twilight Struggle, you'd like to be able to like, I'm gonna put all my stuff in Europe and lock that down but you, and do yeah. all this other stuff. Be like. <sighs> It's pretty barren. Yeah. And I feel that way in Fire in the Lake. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this thing and then this thing. And you do it and you're like, hmm. I'm like, well, well, I've only done like a tiny yeah. bit in the grand scheme of things. So a lot of that, this is a very tense 
very thematic. Game. It is, it's Vietnam yeah. in a box. I mean, it, it, that's exactly yeah, the, what it is. This is a great game, and and while it may not be as complex as Empire of the Sun, once again, I feel like playing this to play it and play it well is really complex. And it's complex in the way you have to think about things. Yeah, and I, I like that. It's hard to execute your strategy and execute it well. Yeah. And consistently execute it. Yeah, I mean... Because the difficulty is the U.S. is fairly powerful, but the, the VC is very nimble. You know, they're, they're starting to fire here, and then, oh, all of a sudden, down in, the, down in Saigon, you got trouble. And it's like, you, you can't take care of everything. Yeah, so you go and, like, put a bunch of troops down there, and then you're like... Oh, no, we got no the troops north up is there. open. And then yeah. the NVA are just like cockroaches, but it's just like yeah. millions of them Keep just coming. flowing out of the north, going through Cambodia on the yeah. Ho Chi Minh Trail, just and, pouring out the mountains. And it has a mini game as well. It has the uh, Ho Chi Minh Trail. Yeah. Right? Which is just so cool. Very cool. I love in that game how you can use napalm, but it it affects. I, that's a bad statement. <laughs> I apologize. Use of napalm is very powerful, but it affects desperately. The political control of territories. Yeah. People don't I like, like that. I, I think that is a thematic element that works very well. But that's my one of my more complex games that I think is like Twilight Struggle or Twilight Struggle esque. And uh, all these games that we've talked about are fantastic. I love them. So yeah, start with the easy ones. It's kind of a jumping off. Work point. your way up, and then and kind of just hopefully this video gave you some ideas and inspiration about what you may or may not like to look for. Um, after having played Twilight Struggle. So, appreciate you guys tuning yeah. in. And uh, we've been the Thanks, guys.